Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. You are in the uh, webinar titled How Policy and Practice is Helping Work Program Contractors to Deliver Better Job Outcomes. And you're very welcome. It's great to have you here. So thank you very much for joining. Um, the webinar is hosted by ourselves. We're Policy and Practice. My name is Janet and I uh, am the Head of Marketing at Policy and Practice. But I'm not going to say very much today. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping uh, and I'm going to introduce you shortly to our panellists who are going to do the majority of the work today. But just before we do start, if I could just get you to, in the panel on your right hand side, if you could just raise your hand, if you could just click to raise your hand, and then I can see that you can hear us correctly. Um, that's great, thank you very much for those who are doing that. Um, and also, just while you're there in that panel on your right hand side, um, just familiarize yourself, if you're not already, with the GoToWebinar software, and you'd see that you can ask questions um, so please do feel free to put questions in that panel box throughout the webinar and with a, ses with a section uh, at the end of the webinar where I'm going to, I'm going to pick up some of those questions. Um, we will finish definitely by 11.30. We aim to finish by 11.15. Um, so the more questions we have, the longer it will take. But equally, we are demonstrating some software, one of which uh, benefits of which is, is that it is nice and fast. Um, so it may well be that we finish sooner. Uh, we're recording the webinar, um, so that means that you'll be able to share it with your colleagues at a later date. And we're going to have some next steps um, to share with you at the end of the webinar just to, uh, to move the conversation further. So without further ado, I'd like to just talk through the agenda. Um, and very, very simply, I do like simple agendas. Um, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the problem uh, and in terms of uh, what um, Serco in particular, uh, as a work program contractor, what, what issues they were struggling with, what issues they were looking for a solution to. Um, and I think that should be quite interesting for everybody to hear from Stuart, um, from Stuart directly what that was. Uh, equally then we're going to talk about the solution that um, uh, Serco uh, and others have procured. And then also looking at particularly about the benefits that um, that Serco uh, think will bring from get from the software. And then we're going to do Peter's going to do a demonstration of that software, and then we're going to leave you with a bit of a summary at the end. So I've been told, I have to say, um, that to, to describe Peter as extremely handsome, and you can judge for yourself from the photo there. Um, and equally, I've not met Stuart before, but doesn't he look lovely? Um, Stuart is the uh, uh, the, Stuart is the Senior Performance Manager at Circo Welfare Services and Peter uh, works in the uh, team here at Policy and Practice. So it's always great to put faces to names of people that you're going to be um, talking with and listening to today. Okay, so um, just a little bit about Policy and Practice before I hand over to Stuart to talk you through Circo. Um, policy and Practice, we are a social policy software and consulting business, which sounds very grand, um, but this is why we have a nice simple Venn diagram to, to illustrate what we do. We were founded by Devon Galani, who was part of the team that developed Universal Credit at the Centre for Social Justice. And when Universal Credit was adopted, Devon saw this as a unique opportunity that not many people have in the policy world, which was to have your idea actually put into practice. So at that point, he had two options. He could move on to the next policy report, or he could try and make universal credit work. And fortunately, he, tried, he did the latter. Uh, at, at that point then, Devon founded Policy and Practice to address the gap between policy intent and the practical delivery of, of policy. And we do that in a variety, we, we, we do a variety of different things to achieve this, as you can see. So we do policy research, and we also do consultancy work, mainly for local authorities, um, to help them better understand the impact of welfare reform, or to help them develop their own schemes. And we also um, have a range of um, outcome-based software tools. This is what we're going to talk about today, like our universal benefit and budgeting calculators. And these help our clients to be more effective in supporting customers uh, into work and delivering policy intent. So that's a little bit about us. And uh, I'm going to now hand over to Stuart, who's going to talk you through um, Serco and introduce the rest of the presentation. Over to you, Stuart. OK, thank you, Janet. Um... Good morning, everyone. Yes, thanks, Janet, for the, uh, for the lovely introduction. That's one of the better photos I've got, actually. Um, okay, so just a little bit about Serco, for those that don't know. Um, 
yeah, a, a global service company um, in the outsourcing space, um, delivering lots of uh, services um, for for government. Um, I think I think where where sort of we come in with with this is uh, the division that I'm in is is uh, Circo Welfare Services, um, and we've been a prime contractor of welfare to work market uh, since 2009 um, with a flexible New Deal. Um, so what what do we do? We we're currently, amongst other things, in the welfare services division, um, prime contractor for the work program. Um, the, we cover this in, in, in two regions, that's the South Yorkshire region uh, in which I'm based and down in the West Midlands. Because um, this, this will be useful context for later as well, um, our delivery model as a prime is to deliver the work programme um, uh, through, a, uh, through, through, a, through a supply chain. So we, we've got a, a fully supply chain model, um, so we then subcontract the, those, those services out and we've got a um, We've got roughly about sort of 25, 25 subcontractors across um, the two regions, uh, delivering um, sort of uh, different different parts of our our model. So it, it can it, it has the uh, potential to be a little bit complicated. Um, so what's some of the problems we've we've experienced to sort of put put this into context? Um, to start with, actually, one of our minimum service offers for the work program contract was that all uh, customers would be uh, entitled to a better off in work calculation. Um, or, again having having sort of our delivery uh, delivery subcontracted out um, that, that in itself poses us with a challenge to ensure that, um, that that was being offered and delivered on the front line and there was consistency um, in that in that delivery, um, what we actually found found was that um, we had lots of uh, we had some issues, shall we say, with uh, with with advisors on the front line and, and organisations um, not having the confidence and, and and knowledge to to deliver um, effective better off in work calculations. Um, there was inconsistencies in the systems they were using across across our network. Um, some were using some of the free systems, and some felt that they needed um, the expertise to be able to uh, complete these top and work calculations and have um, constructive conversation, effective conversation with customers about their benefits um, and what they'd be entitled to when they moved into work and how much better off they would be. Um, but again, you know, one of the one of the one of the reasons why we, we put that in as a minimum service offer is because we realise that how powerful a tool it can be um, to help overcome customer misconceptions and, and, and overcome those 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 barriers to employment. You know, one of those barriers to employment is customers thinking um, that they won't be better off uh, once they go into work. Uh, okay. On to the solution. Um, so realising this. Um, we wanted to um, find find a good product that would help us sort of uh, sort of overcome some of these problems and ensure that we, we were offering our minimum service offer and offering a um, um, a, good, a good service ultimately to our to our customers. Um, so we began a trial period with policy and practice. They came in there and presented to our senior management team, um, and. Uh, we, we 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 tried this in August 2014 with a with a selection I think just four of our our subcontractors uh, a mixture of, of, of sort of larger and, and 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 smaller ones to get a good good feel um, and the, the the feedback was has been positive um, you know ultimately we uh, we've we've uh, procured the service and we've we've, we've taken um, the policy and practice. Better off and work calculator forward, and we've now launched that. Um, so, actually, some of the key reasons that we've decided to choose to choose this product, um, and this was, you know, after after a reasonable uh, uh, trial period and and consulting with our network and, and making sure we got we got we got a um, a, a fair bit of feedback. Um, I think most importantly, it was about uh, the usability and how easy frontline advisors found this to use. Particularly compared to others that they'd use and others that we'd seen, um, 
some of the things to know whether the, the the added features around this usability around the um, the budget calculator in particular so not only is the work program about getting people into employment but ultimately it's about sustainable employment and so so they found that as a real powerful tool so to help with customers once they're in work um, to help them budget and, and, and ultimately um, help, help them stay in employment um, again obviously with the uh, with the uh, UC coming on board soon universal credit the fact that this had the capability and adaptability to, to universal credit was was obviously a strong strong selling point um, and again as a as a as a prime contractor there's a whole a holy um, supply chain model um, you can imagine that the ability to to track and monitor um, management information and management reporting on what our subcontractors are doing is, is extremely important again as I mentioned um, we knew there are inconsistencies across that uh, across our supply chain. So the fact that now subcontractors use this policy and practice tool and the uh, the useful management reporting um, functionality that's available at the back of it allows us then to track to track usage um, and uh, helps us have those have those conversations with the subcontractors and ultimately we can see how successful this has been uh, when we overlay this against um, performance. That's great. Thanks, Stuart, for that. Um, perhaps if I just pick up very quickly now, uh, and we can come back in, in a little while, unless there's any, anything else pressing. Um, certainly with the calculator tool, this is Peter, by the way, speaking, the, the, um, the handsome one um, that you saw earlier on. Uh, just sort of drop that in. Um, what I want to do now really is get into having a look at, um, oh, sorry, some of the benefits. We, uh, sorry, I forgot about this slide. So this is some of the benefits, but we'll come on to that probably in a, in a minute. I'll leave that slide hanging, and we'll come back to that a little later. And then, uh, and then if you want to pick up on some of these points in a, in a minute, Stuart. But I think what we might, might want to do just at this stage is, is have a look at the, the software itself and get into that. Um, I just wanted to quickly, um, before I do that, show, show this. The, in terms of what we do with policy and practice, certainly some of the stuff Janet mentioned, uh, we have a lot of resources or a few resources on our website that you might find useful. And certainly the engine for the, um, for the calculator that I'm going to look at now, we've used in a number of ways um, in terms of <clears throat> helping people understand the impacts of the welfare reform changes. And we've created a blog here as a result of the budget where we put all the in information that the Chancellor came out with in the budget through the calculator. And certainly when the, looking at the incentives to work, some of that is, is analysed in more detail there. So if you do want to have a look at that, go to our website, policyandpractice.co.uk, go to the blogs page and, and have, a, have a look at that. Um, sorry, let's just go back to here. So this is, here I am in the Better Off in Work calculation. Uh, calculator. And one of the things we're able to do is to share, one of the things that uh, Stuart was talking about was the importance of being able to share information. So I've got a, a range of different reports here that I can look at. And if I just pull out this better off, from this Better Off in Work calculation and load uh, the report for Peter, which is, um, and, and the calculation we've done for Peter. As Janet mentioned, this is a, a piece of software that one of the benefits that they found in, in a lot of our uh, customers is that it's a very quick uh, piece of software to use. The Housing Association in the Midlands is using it, and they've actually put it onto tablets for people to help, help themselves to do budgeting work. And they do it in four or five, six minutes on a, on, a, on a tablet computer, playing around with it, understanding what their situation in the financial positions are, and able to do calculations. So a, a software that's able to do that and then taking a 20-minute demonstration to, do, to, to look at it in more detail is somewhat of a challenge. Um, but we're able, we'll come across some of these buttons a little later on in terms of how we do various things. Um, but the reason why I've got something changed, various information uh, saved is, is fairly obvious. It saves me you seeing me typing stuff in. So here I've got Peter. Let's just go through Peter's case. We're wondering if he's out of work at the moment. He's 35 and he's got a partner who's 32. They've got two children. They live on the Wirral, which happens to be where I am today. And they're in social rent and they uh, are their social rent in a three-bedroom property is £120 a week. Uh, we have had a, a question previously sent in to us before we did this. If somebody wants to look at ESA, certainly I can put ESA in there. For the time being, I'll come back to an ESA award uh, a little later. 
uh, and we'll have a look at the differences in terms of what that means to people in terms of their calculations and are they better off in work. But certainly I can put all that information in. Uh, I'm very happy to do so. Equally, uh, I can fairly uniquely decide whether I want to include free school meals in the calculation. And I can go and look at all time kinds of disability that people may have within the household and, and cover all that information off as well. Uh, for the sake of a simple calculation, I'm going to leave that blank. And if there's any other circumstances that people may have, uh, I can complete all that information too. You'll notice that as I hover my mouse over a particular box, it's actually saying, uh, giving me guidance. So the, 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 the importance of providing your advisors with guidance in terms of what they're completing and what that means as they complete things is fairly, in, in, is fairly simple. Um, and so the training part of having the software is, is very quick and easy. And again, we can look at if they, this household's got any particular savings, previous savings that they've got. Uh, we can, we can uh, fill that information as well. But straight away, I'm looking at both systems, and I get my immediate out-of-work entitlement um, and how much that people will receive uh, once they're out of work. So as you see, under both systems, under the current benefit system and the, under universal credit, the, the numbers are very, very similar. The top box here shows their work allowances, how much they can work before they start losing benefits. And you can see immediately the differences between the current benefit system and universal credit uh, and under these circumstances that we've put in. And things like housing benefit, if we just click on that, we can break, have a breakdown in terms of what that, how that's been calculated. And you can see this, this particular household, they're suffering under, for the under occupancy rules or bedroom tax. They have, uh, they're entitled to two bedrooms, they've actually got three and uh, they have therefore a size reduction of 14%, which is 73 pounds in their case. And for all these different elements, we can see the breakdown of how that, how that is being calculated for them. What we're now trying to get to as a situation is what happens if they move into work and what, what would happen if they did go into work? Well, I can now start putting in what kind of job, Peter, do you think you could have? Um, and he says, well, I could probably work, uh, you know, there's potential for me to have a job at, four, at, six, at the basic rate of pay, at the minimum wage at £6.50, uh, and do 14 hours a week. And again, we could put a, sep a second job in there if we wanted to. And his partner thinks she could probably get a, a job at the basic rate of pay for five hours a week. Well, it's not good enough, I don't think, just to say, well, what, what, how would that affect you? We need to say, well, what would be the costs of going to work? There may be some childcare costs, and I've put some childcare costs in, and there may be costs of travel get to, to get to work to make it more realistic. And we might want to take into consideration at this point any tax credits from previous years. In this instance, uh, there are none. Uh, so we can do straight away a better off in work calculation. And the first better off in work calculation it'll do um, is, is to say, what is the situation under the current benefit system? So it's calculating that for me now. And uh, for some reason, I'm online. It's, a, it's an online system, and my connection seems to be particularly slow. But uh, and, uh, let's just go back under the, uh, how would you, under the current benefit system. You, they, the, under the current benefits, current system, they'd be £92 a month worse off uh, in going to work. And we can have a look at the detail of why that would be and have a detailed breakdown of, of, of what that means to them. Um, and that's probably because I put rather a lot of costs in, in terms of their net earnings. Uh, it's also to do with working uh, in, in terms of their tax credits and other, other, other parts of the system. But they are losing, as you see, £92 a month in, in, in childcare and £43 a month uh, in, in for travel. Uh, but also the way the benefits breaks down means that they are losing, uh, they're not getting any work uh, tax credits back. Uh, and so we can have a complete breakdown of what that means. Uh, as we go through all the system, um, so they'd be better off by they'd be worse off by eleven hundred pounds a year. Um, and if they're affected by the benefit cap, we can have a look at how that how the benefit cap would be affecting them. In this particular instance, I don't think the benefit cap would be affecting them greatly. But we can get an analysis under the under the benefit cap uh, of what's happening. So they're not losing anything on the benefit cap, but they are losing by going back to work. Um, so you'll be better off under universal credit, though, by £325 a month. And again, we can have a breakdown here. We can see the complete breakdown of where that income is coming from and see how that's affecting them. Now, if, that, if they are on universal credit and they think that is in, of interest to them to go back to work, one of the things you can start doing as an advisor is have a conversation and say, well, what kind of job do you think you could do? Well, you might want to be a carpenter. Where do you want to be a carpenter? Well, he's based on the Wirral, so I can put in Wirral here as part of what I do. 
click on the Universal Jobs Match link, and it immediately links me to Universal Jobs Match for available jobs on the Wirral. So as somebody who's having a conversation, uh, and for those of you who don't know, Birkenhead is uh, not the capital of the Wirral, but it is certainly the, uh, the main town on the Wirral. Um, <clears throat> ferry across the Mersey and all of that. Um, immediately links you to available jobs, completely up to date for uh, for carpenters on the Wirral. And again, we can have a breakdown of what that means in terms of benefit caps and so on. The other thing we can start looking at, though, is their take-home income chart. And to help advisors understand, I find this as, uh, help, really helps advisors understand how the benefit systems work and what the effects of going to work are. And you can see that working tax credits, as they're a couple, don't really kick in for a little while and they're losing money at this stage. And so every, for every pound they're earning under the current benefit system, they are losing benefits until you get to a certain point. And we can see what those points are and start advising people, actually you are working this amount of time. If you worked a few more hours a week, you would be better off in work and where that works and how, how that will work for them. You can see the map for the under universal credit is very much different, very much flattened out the way it's working uh, currently uh, in terms of the, the current way the universal credit is is being calculated. And again, the calculator allows us to do a full comparison between universal credit and the current system. So we can start seeing how that's working for the current year, for the out of work, uh, in, for in work, and in for terms for future years. And one of the things we're doing at the moment is using the calculator to start mapping this in terms of the changes that have come through in the, in the, uh, the budget how that will map for future years and how work incentives will work uh, as we move through this parliament. We have a number of links then in terms of how people can apply for benefits, how people can apply for universal credit and these can be customized. Uh, but we also then can come, come with an action plan for Peter and say wouldn't it be useful if you contacted, you updated your CV and uh, up call, call, universal, call the job on universal job match that we just talk, found for you. Having done all of that, it's quite an interesting thing that we can then say to, to him, we can save this case, and in saving it, we end up with a unique number. So although I'm not storing any particular personal data about Peter, I can put this into my CRM system, my, my, in, in my unique link that we've saved for him, and I can now also export this and say, Peter, go away with this document so that you can see the, incentive, see the reasons why you'd be better off in work. So I can now download this document as a PDF. If we just give it a moment to do that. This is normally the time when we're in an interactive uh, meeting. Uh, people can ask questions. So if you do have any questions, I don't know if Janet, anybody is asking any questions. Um, feel free to either raise your hand or just type them into the dialog box and, uh, and we'll cover them off um, as, you, as you do it. Here we go. There's the PDF just coming now. My computer's particularly slow today. So just to download the PDF. Um, and then we can we can see the the document that we can then pass on to Peter and his partner, uh, so they can take this away with them and understand what they're doing. And again, if you've got multiple agencies, you'll be able to share this information with other agencies. Uh, we started working in Newcastle uh, with the with the local authority there and with Your Homes Newcastle uh, for doing this kind of work. And the way in which they had been working until they bought um, the benefit calculator was they were saying it takes them sometimes five times they're entering into different systems the same information to be able to support people either back into work or with their budgeting calculations. And because we can share it, it's saving them a huge amount of time and money in doing this. So here's our document. We've got our unique reference number that we can find, find again if we need to. Um, and then we can just go down our document and see the kind of information in terms of our action plan You'd be better off by in, under universal credit by £325 a month or £75 a week nearly and the breakdown of that and we also have our agreed action plan that we've agreed with Peter so that when he comes back in we can see whether he's done those things that we've agreed to him as we're helping him back into work. Just very quickly, one of the things that uh, Stuart uh, talked about was sustainable work and helping people budget. I've got rather a lot of calculators on my system. But let me just move to the budgeting calculator um, because the budgeting calculator starts helping us to understand. Um, just log, log back in. So 
So here we are in the budgeting calculator, which I'm going to look at under the current system. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Peter's case that we've just we've just put in there. And load the report for Peter. So here's Peter, we've got all his detail, and now we're starting to think about actually uh, is this is this family in a in a cash surplus or a cash shortfall in terms of what their income is and how they're spending their money uh, so that we can maintain their ability to, to stay in work and of course for housing associations this is very important because they're wanting to make sure that people are able to afford to pay their the rents and for local and, and also local authorities are very keen to ensure that you know the local economy is being driven in the right way so we've got all our information our basic information that we've, we've already put in uh, for 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 Peter here. Uh, again, we can add disabilities, other circumstances, and all their earnings. So if they do have earnings from 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 work, we can put that in. So obviously, I put various bits of information in. Just for the sake of argument, I'll leave that as zero here. So we 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 picked up what the, what earnings that, that him Peter and his partner would have. But just for the sake of uh, showing the software in terms of what we can do about being in a cash shortfall, I'm going to put this in as zeros. Go to step two and we can see what the take home pay is, exactly the same as before. Again, this is just under the current benefit system, not under both. And then we can start manually entering information and can, we can start linking to actually you could be on more benefits and you, we can help you to claim for those other benefits if you wanted to by creating links for those. But now we start thinking about their costs of living. So we know what their rent is and their council taxes and we can start putting information in about rates and other, other, other bills that they have, electricity bills. Um, always a bone of contention everywhere I go. Everybody has different figures for this, but we know what the TV license figure is likely to be. But how much do people spend on satellite TV and cable? Uh, how much do people pay on their home phone and internet, or is it bundled in? And what is your mobile phone uh, cost? If it's a couple, £20 a month is probably quite low, so I'm going to make that £35 a month because there's likely to be two, at least two mobile phones in the house. Um, if there are other costs, which is very simple, we can just add these other costs in, so we don't restrict you to how many costs you put into there. In terms of travel, in this instance, I've said that Peter has a car. It's costing £140 a year on road tax, £450 in insurance, and it's about £20 a week in petrol. Uh, the family is still using buses to get to and from schools, uh, and his wife occasionally goes on the bus shopping if he's, if he's out and about. Um, housekeeping costs. Well, again, a bone of contention in terms of what's acceptable uh, here, but we're going to look do some comparisons. But we're saying this family of four is spending about £120 a week on their, on their weekly shop. There's school expenses, clothing costs, and there may be other costs as well uh, that they may have in terms of their regular spending. But other costs might be they, go out, they do go out, they, they give their kids pocket money, uh, he's a member of a football club, um, £10 a week on that. £20 a, a month they, they, they use for birthdays. Uh, for their annual uh, celebration, Christmas, Eid, or whatever, they're spending about £275 a year annually. And again, all of these are, we can break down into, into how they're spending their money and, and what they're caught up when, when, when it's being spent. Uh, they're both smokers. It's only about £6 a day, though. And uh, they're spending about £15 a week on, on, on alcohol. And again, in some parts of the country, that's high. In other parts, people see that as low. Uh, but this family do have some debts as well, which they need to service. So here, it's very quick and easy to say, um, to put this information in. They've got an outstanding, they've borrowed £1,000 from family, but they're paying that back at about £40 a month. And they've also got a credit card debt of £500, which they're paying back at about £20 a month, or at least they're trying to. <coughs> uh, any other debts that they have in here, council tax arrears, utility arrears, rent arrears, we can put into here and there may be some student loans, and they may have bought uh, stuff on higher purchase. Again, all of this can go in here. And if we haven't got enough information, we can create an action plan to ask them, to could, could they gather more information on their debts, and can we, give, can we ask for that by a certain time to be done? So this now means that we can start working out, based on all their income and everything else they're doing, is there a cash surplus or a shortfall? And we can see this family have a cash shortfall each month of £401.40p. So despite the fact that their spending seems to be normal uh, and we're not being very, uh, we're not being judgmental, we can see a breakdown of where that comes into. So as to keep them in sustainable employment, what we want to do is have a conversation with them about what they can do about this. And clearly part of what they can do about this may be to go back into work. 
Now, in some organizations, we go to housing associations and the like, they may have severely disabled people who couldn't consider uh, going back into work. So we may untick this. But of course, today's uh, webinar is all about getting healthy people to, to work, so we'll keep that in there. But also, we want to think about their economy in the round, their, 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 their cost of living in the round. So looking at bills, other items, and maybe moving house, and what effects that could have on them as, as, a, as a family. So here we can start looking at saying, okay, we, we, we've already talked about could they move into work. Well, they've seen the state of their, uh, their household budget, and they're realizing that actually Peter thinks he could probably get a job at the basic rate of, of pay for 24 hours a week. And his partner is thinking that maybe she wouldn't be able to do any work because of childcare at this moment. Again, we can put our expenses of going to work uh, back in here. So how much would it cost to travel to work? £12 a day uh, on weekdays um, and so on. So we go to step six here and we can see, would they be better off in work? So he would be better off in work under the current benefit system, and we've seen the result of that, uh, better off in work by only £1.61 a month, and therefore still have a big shortfall. And that's because of the way in which the family is being affected by uh, the way the current benefit system works. That would be different, obviously, if I put it under universal credit, uh, as we saw before. So maybe that's not an incentive to go to work for him at the moment. So we might need to think about a different kind of job or other things. And this is one of the reasons why people are disincentivized from going to work. And we can, and I'm very happy, by the way, if people want me to put different figures in, just let me know what those figures are and we can have a conversation about it and we can discuss that. But how can this family work, do things in other ways? Well, they could potentially save £203.66 on their bills. Where could this, they're still even with the cash shortfall of nearly £200, but actually things like their electricity bill is high. We do comparisons, for, we get our information from the DECC, the Money Advice Trust, and our water bills we get from Thames Water. So we're doing very strong comparisons in terms of the type of household, where that household is, and the number of people within that, the size of property, obviously, and the number of people who are living there to get our figures so we can do comparisons. And again, this is just so you can, as an advisor, start helping people to consider where they could save money and, uh, and get their, their bills and get their income back online. So yes, their electricity bill seems to be high. So does their travel bill, but not by a huge amount. Their travel bill is, is about £179.17 each month, uh, but their average bill is only £175. So it's not huge, but obviously they could consider what ways in which they could save that. And other costs, again, seem to be quite high. We'll break into those other costs in a moment or two uh, in terms of how that is comparison, uh, comparing with other, uh, with other uh, people in a similar situation. So yes, we, we might want to say check on electricity use and come back and have a talk to us about that. What about money on other items? So here we can start seeing how much they're spending on other items. So the cash shortfall is £13.57 a day. That It does equate to over nearly £5,000 a year. And again, when we start looking at the breakdown of this, although their cigarettes was only £6 a day, that does equate to £2,190 per year. And it might be an area where they consider uh, reviewing their spending. And if you're looking at what the parents are spending on in terms of cigarettes, alcohol, and going out, that's only three quarters of their additional spending. If you include sports clubs, it's even more. But birthdays, Christmas, and children's entertainment is pretty low in terms of their spending. So again, it might be something that as a family, they want to re reshape their spending. And we're not going to be judgmental, but we, we might want to have that conversation, or they might want to have that conversation. It might be the first time they've realized uh, the percentages of the spending in different areas. And again, could they move to a smaller property? Well, we already found out earlier on that they were in a property that was uh, higher than they had would be allowed under the under the uh, bedroom tax rules. Uh, and if they did move to another property, they'd still have a cash shortfall of £304, but they'd be able to save £72.80 in rent and £24.23 in bills. So again, very clear indications of where people can save money and sort out their budgeting. And yet again, would be able to send that into a, a document, save it with, for, for when they come back and talk to us about this, and we can start helping them back into uh, work to understand the impacts of change. So again, I can download this, and we get a document out from this uh, for this report that it looks slightly different, it looks a bit, bit fuller, and uh, is laid out in, in a similar way to the common financial statement uh, that organizations are using uh, routinely nowadays. Uh, but we can see our action plan uh, that we've generated. We can see our breakdown in terms of where they're, where they're spending their money. Um, and also we can start seeing the breakdown of where this is. And they can go away and start reviewing this information. For the first time, it's broken down clearly for them. 
uh, to, to look at. Um, well, I'm aware that I've spent quite a lot of time on any of that. Um, just very quickly, I will just move back very quickly into uh, answer the question on ESA. So let's just go back into a better off in work uh, calculation and let's just have a look at create a new case, a new calculation. Um, this is what it just syncs my system as you can see uh, as we load it up. Let's just do a new calculation. So before we start, let's go and start looking at, uh, we'll look at both systems again. Um, let's put uh, somebody in here. This can be uh, Fiona. Uh, she's 25. She's female. Um, she has two children. Um, she is on ESA. Um, I don't know what we want to do here, but we'll do the assessment phase for now. We'll leave this in terms of she's in East Midlands Chesterfield. Um, and she's in Chesterfield uh, Borough Council. Um, she is in private rent. So she is in private rent and it automatically tells us uh, what the LHA rate is for her in that area. She's in a three bedroom property so the LHA rate has gone up um, for her and she's got two children. One is aged uh, five and is male. The other is aged three and is, and is female. Uh, there are no other disabilities in the in, in the house, um, but immediately we can start putting information in about that as we've mentioned, and straight away we can have a look at her out of work entitlements. Her out of work entitlements under both systems will be quite different um, than it would be otherwise, and we can start seeing the work allowances that they've got, she's got under under the system, um, and here we've got the employment support uh, allowance has been calculated in uh, for her the ESA support allowance. So very easily we can start looking at putting that information in, um, in terms of what that is. Uh, and again, it, what if she went back into work? Well, clearly if she went back into work, she's looking to work, uh, let's say, um, let's say 22 hours a week, she will get working tax credits at 22 hours a week at the basic rate of tax. But in doing so, she's going to have a number of childcare costs. And we can start saying, enter the hourly cost is um, £4.27. During term time, she's going to need uh, nine, six, six hours a day at that and during school holidays she's going to need uh, again six hours a day for, for that. We'll just leave that at that. You may be entitled to free childcare. Again a little notice has come up here. All three and four year olds are entitled to 15 hours of free childcare for 38 weeks of the year. So two year olds are entitled to free childcare. So some information and guidance comes up straight away in terms of what she's entitled to so that you as an advisor would be able to help her through that situation. Um, would there be any cost of going to work? Yes, the cost of going to work should be, let's say, £10 a week. And a better off in work calculation would take all this information into consideration. And under the current benefit system, she would be better off by £410.67 a month. Now, that may or not be realistic, but straight away we can start seeing how that is being calculated out. I can link that to uh, Universal Jobs Match, as we did before, uh, and, and, um, and we can put all this information in. Under universal credit, she'd be entitled to, would she be better off in work under universal credit? Let's wait while it does this calculation for me. By £339, so possibly not quite as much, but we can do a breakdown of how that works when we look at the income charts as it goes through. Hopefully that's answered the question that we had from Chris beforehand. Um, if there are any more details you want, Chris, by all means, uh, give, give us a call. And... Um, we can we can start to do that. Um, we can start looking at that in more detail. Um, so yes, there we go. So that's looking at ESA stuff. Um, if anybody wants to to look at that in more detail, I can very happy to go online and do personalised demonstrations for people, or even to visit with your, you and your team um, to do that. I'm just going to just just pausing while I just go down to see if I can get to the. You'll notice my Firefox is not responding, so it's my system uh, error here. So hopefully you're all still online while my Firefox isn't responding. So let's just come back to here. Um, Stuart, are you still online? I am, Peter. Happy days. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, maybe you want to go through how you found some of the usage of, the, uh, of this on this screen here, or do you want me to go through it? I'm happy to do either way. 
in terms of the benefits um, that you found at, at Circo? Yeah, I think I think for me the 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 key benefit, if, if for me, that I think it's I think it's fair to say it's probably a little bit, you know, too early to directly link um, uh, the, the better off in work calculator to sort of uh, performance improvement, but clearly we can we can see the feedback from from our advisors on the front line and from our providers is is um, is sort of overwhelming that using this using this um, this this product, um, it's 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 so quick and easy to use for the advisors compared to others that it frees them up to have effective conversations with the customer to discuss the results with the customer, um, and ultimately they found that that to be you know such a such a powerful tool to help them have those conversations about uh, being better off in work, um, talking about realistic jo job goals and all the other things that that. That are important to do. So I think I think that would be um, one of the main benefits that, that we've had fed back. Um, and indeed, of course, you know that 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 issue I spoke about earlier about the uh, the confidence that an advisor has in able to use you know the the, the, the complicated world of of, of benefits. Um, this again has 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 allowed us and our providers um, to ensure that all advisors. Feel confident enough to be able to uh, to have those conversations, those meaningful conversations and engagement with with customers. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll I'll hand back to you, Peter, for at that. But that's me, brilliant. Thanks very much for that. It's very helpful input, uh, Stuart. Thanks for that. So you can see all the different uh, benefits that uh, that people are winning with that. So we, we've had a quick look at the software. So in summary. Uh, I think the, the things that we've picked up from this, and certainly with the case study that is available um, that, uh, that Serco have done with us, is that yes, it does save advisors time. It's fairly easy to, to with a built-in guidance to help advisors. Um, we certainly found that some, some of the people who have recently procured a, the software from us who had been using other tools on the marketplace have found that the graphics is very clear and easy in a visual way, and therefore people engage with that. Uh, much easier. Um, it's certainly comprehensive and accurate. Um, people have certainly found the, the calculator very accurate in terms of uh, their understanding of the system, and that's with um, wizened old housing, so ha housing uh, local authority benefits advisors are finding it very accurate to, to do their stuff um, and, and to, to make calculations and to have accurate and meaningful conversations with, with clients. Uh, and also found that it actually does, it is outcome focused. So for, for welfare to work providers um, who are being targeted on helping people to get back to work, this, the way in which we structured this is very clearly uh, enabling people to achieve those outcomes. Janet, I'll hand over to you. Do you want to cover the, 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 the wrap up? Brilliant, uh, yes. And, and let me know if there's any questions anybody's asked. Okay. Well, I think you've got yourself and Stuart have got off nice and lightly on the question front. So, um, so, so you did. You, you've obviously done a very good job uh, of explaining the, the the webinar situation to everybody. Um, but yes, in terms of next steps, thank you everybody for attending. What we're going to do now is send you the uh, copy of this webinar recording and also a copy of the slides as well, because we we have had feedback in the past where people have wanted to share that with their colleagues. Um, and if that is the case, and, and as Peter said, if you'd like a demo that is tailored specifically to you, then do just say. Um, as I've said there on the slide, you can, you're can you very welcome and we'd love you to request a copy of the case study that we've done with Serco um, that outlines the, uh, the whole experience in more detail and certainly gives a lot more of the uh, results that we got from the trial, uh, which helped Serco to go to the decision to do full rollout. So there's a lot of really interesting information there. Some quotes from in, um, frontline advisors as well, uh, which we always find very interesting. Uh, you can also request uh, additional information and pricing details too, uh, and as I said, a follow-up meeting. We'd love to come out and see you. Um, and the way we uh, worked with Circo was that we came and presented to the senior management team. So we'll go, we'll come to wherever you are. We're very happy to, to do that. Um, okay, so. Uh, I think then just just leaves us with any more questions? No, I don't have any more questions to ask. So just to leave you then with um, Peter's contact details, which are coming up on the screen next. 
Um, so peter at policyandpractice.co.uk, you can contact Peter directly on that email address and indeed his phone number, which is 07 805 Peter's on Twitter, uh, as is policy and practice, policy underscore practice, and our website details are there too. And indeed, if you'd like to get in touch directly with Stuart um, to find out from his point of view more about the the, the uh, the trial and the uh, experiences with policy and practice, we'll be very happy to uh, give you Stuart's details as well. So without further ado, thank you very much everybody for your time and for attending our webinar today and I do wish you a pleasant rest of the day. Thanks ever so much to Stuart and also thanks to Peter for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.